Okay, I think we are we are starting. So, should we do some kind of intro? Oh, Mario, I'll sat there in the background. Do you want to do a bit of um, a bit of an intro to kick us off? No, you're just gonna gonna sit and look awesome. Yeah, Omar's oh, gonna sit and look look awesome. That's what he does. I don't know whether he actually hears us. <laughs> ah, yeah, I do hear you. Um, no, I'll, I'll let you guys take it away, and I'll uh, be prepared with questions at the end of this. Perfect. Awesome. Let's do this. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do is just unshare my screen briefly, drag some windows around, and then reshare it. So bear with me for two seconds. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put. <laughs> I had this all neatly organized, and it's now you're, disorganized. You're, you're still sharing your screen though, so we can see all that. Hey, I see Petty. Yeah, that's fine. That was the plan. Okay, so we're going to start with this one. Um, so yeah, a brief bit of context, I guess. And um, we got a whole bunch of submissions from people who wanted us to take a look at their site, um, which is great. Um, I know technical SEO isn't always the most glamorous aspect of SEO, um, so it's good to have some people looking for some feedback. We've got 45 minutes or so um, of structured discussion, so we only really had time to look at three sites. Now, that's barely the tip of the iceberg from what we got, so I spent a lot of time looking through um, a bunch of those submissions and tried to find sites which had problems and opportunities which covered all sorts of diverse issues, from problems with e-commerce categorization to speed to mobile friendliness and a bunch of other areas. So hopefully from within this, even if it's not your site, you'll get some relevant and useful um, feedback and some stuff to look at. So I've dug around behind the scenes. Um, Yoast has explored two, looking at mobile in particular. We're gonna go through three sites um, to give you some practical advice and pick apart some of what's going on. So let's start with petty things. Yes, do you want to kick us off, or shall I just? Um... No, yeah, it, I, this this site is awesome because what it does is they they make bags in Spain and they ship them to well to a lot of places. It turns out. Could you take us to the bottom and actually I'll I'll, I'll start ranting about my own <laughs> problem as I as okay. I was looking for uh, through this site because. What I try to do with all of these sites as I look at them is would I become a customer and what would, me, would, what would help me become a customer and which things are in my way. And they have a shipping and returns in the bottom in the middle there. Um, and it, it took me a, a good 10 minutes to figure out whether they were actually shipping to the Netherlands, which is where I am. Um, because this is like, look at it. Go up. I mean, scroll up to to see. Yeah, it's, it's way down under the pole. For sure. Yeah. So we ship worldwide. Tip of the day. This is very simple to do. You go into their page. You edit it. We ship worldwide should be the first sentence of that page. I think uh, this is really interesting because so shipping and shipping and returns is not one of your big competitive landing pages. It's not where you're making lots of conversions and sales. But there are many people who have these kinds of questions, and the role of every page should be to answer the questions that users have. And we know that if users are struggling and can't find this kind of information, A, it doesn't matter how well you rank because they're not going to buy anything. But B, Google is starting to get really good at understanding this sort of stuff. And I can see that kind of frustration. So definitely a good starting point. Ship, shipping and return policies has actually been one of the things that, Google, that have recently been added to schema. And that'll soon be, well, soon we'll be helping you form those in a way that uh, Google can actually uh, actually read those and understand them. But that'll still mean that if a user comes to that page, they need to understand too. And right now, as a user, I was not understanding it. Yeah, I definitely agreed. But I think as you started out, this is a really nice site. It feels like it's authentic, it's, um, it's artisanal. They repurpose bits of old fabrics that they discover on um, the journeys and travels around the world, maybe not so much recently, um, and re repurpose those into these incredible luxury bags. Um, however, however, so the biz, and, and I should caveat that everything we're saying is only from looking from the outside in, so some of it might not be correct, we're making some assumptions, but it looks like the business um, is founded and run in Spain, and the site might have originally been in Spanish and has since been localized and translated into English. There are areas where they've not done a great job on that. Now, hands up, localization is hard to do it at scale, to get it right, to translate, to manage, that's difficult. But this sort of stuff is really important. Now, from a technical perspective, I won't bore you too much with this, but you can see if you do a bit of digging in the code that their hreflang setup, which sets up all the localization, is really good. This is technically spot on. But there are so many little bits, things like in the header here, where there are bits of Spanish that bleed through into the English pages. 
And then that's going to cause a whole bunch of confusion for Google. There's things like typos in the header in some of the nav where things haven't been translated quite correctly, like treasures instead of treasures. Now, this isn't hardcore tech, but this sort of stuff's really important. That consistency is key. Yeah, it is. And I agree with you that if they've got href lying right, they've probably invested more time in the technical bits than in the actual translation, which is, well, I understand that, but make sure you get the translation right as well. Yeah, it's actually really nice to see a site that's got the localization stuff technically right because it's freaking hard. Um, so that's awesome. Um, one, of the, <laughs> one of the other things I should pick up before we go too much deeper is um, this started returning server errors when we started calling it. So um, I was poking around with it and I fired up a, an SEO calling tool called Screaming Frog, which is the one pretty much everybody uses. And it just goes and fetches all the pages on the site. And while I was doing that, the site kept crashing. So apologies if this is your site and you had a little bit of downtime over the last few days. It might have been me and I'll try and make it up to you. Um, now, this is really interesting because as you look behind the scenes, this site is really well optimized. There are caching plugins. There's a whole bunch of clever efficiency stuff. They've stripped all the white space from the source code. There's a whole bunch of really good best practice stuff going on here. But when I get really nerdy, I can pull up the Chrome, light, uh, Chrome uh, waterfall report and you can see very briefly. All of this is on HTTP2. It's already small files. It all loads really quickly. From a front-end perspective, they've ticked every box. This is really sophisticated. They're on some really good hosting. It looks like they're on SiteBound. They're running SiteBound's caching plugin. Something isn't working. There is no way that me opening 10 pages on this website should break it. And if that happens when I call it, it's probably happening when Google's calling it. It wouldn't surprise me if there's some issues behind the scenes here which are causing troubles with Google um, getting to pages to finding stuff to indexing it because you'll never see that because you're not calling it the way Google is. But yeah, and talk to you. There's, a, uh, there's also a user problem here because if you <laughs> yeah. do this and you send out a newsletter on uh, on a specific point in time, you send it to, uh, well, maybe you send it to 2000 people and uh, a couple of, uh, of them open up the newsletter immediately as you send it, that'll take your site down. If if we if us opening ten pages on your site uh, it takes your site down, then that'll take your site down too. So get on top of that, fix it. It's really important to have uh, to have your site hosted well. And um, in all honesty, spending five or, or ten dollars a month on hosting just isn't enough. So uh, spend them, spend a bit of money. Make sure that you have the best hosting that you that you can afford, because you want to set yourself up for success. Yeah, and there's so many trust issues and things with that, right? That if I see an error on it, I immediately discredit the brand, discredit their capability to ship on time to produce a good product. All of those other subconscious niggles start kicking in. Um, so one of the other things that I caught was, um, and this is quite common on a lot of the sites that I reviewed, um, there's a lot of people who are using um, page builders, whether it's Visual Composer or Beaver Builder or Elementor or one of many others. Um, a lot of those are using um, a lot of very heavy JavaScript now, this is, um, this is the material section on this site. It's really nice. Um, each of these links into a page that talks about the materials in more depth. Look what happens when I turn off JavaScript. If I disable JavaScript and just refresh that page, everything is gone. And this isn't even an issue that it's just invisible and it's waiting for the page to load to use some JavaScript to show it, which is quite common. It's just not there. So the, the approach which is using Visual Composer to build all these nice grid layouts is completely reliant on JavaScript to even produce and source the content. Now, Google says they're getting better at calling and indexing JavaScript. They are getting better. They are still not good. So it's worth testing this on your own site. If you're using these kinds of page builder plugins, um, try and disable JavaScript. There's a hundred ways you can do that. Um, go to Google, as it depends on your browser and settings, etc. But you can turn off JavaScript and browse and you can see what breaks. And if you can't see the content, chances are there's an issue. You might still be okay, but yeah, this, this is definitely something I look into, especially when Gutenberg, um, if you're using it, should increasingly allow you to do this just with blocks. You don't really need to use page builders for a page that's just spitting out these squares of stuff. I already have a question coming up in uh, coming in on hosting, awesome. and, I, and I thought, well, maybe it's best to just deal with that straight away. So, yeah. what is what is a good price value for money? Well, that really depends on a lot of things. What is important is that you host as close to the most people that will visit your site. So if you're in Spain, your hosting should be in Spain if you're selling to Spain. But if you're selling to all of Europe, 
it might as well be in Amsterdam or in London because that's where the m biggest internet exchanges are. If you're like us, where you have people all over the world coming to your site, you really need to spend a bit more and get something in front of your site that will make sure that it's fast everywhere, like Cloudflare or another service like that, that'll, that'll help you. We are big fans of Cloudflare here at Yoast. Um, but I'll also tell you that for Yoast.com, which is admittedly not a small site, we have a <laughs> lot of users and a lot of people working on it. But for Yoast.com, I think our hosting bill in total runs up to like 25K a month at least. Uh, so it, it really depends on what you're doing. Um, but don't underspend on that. Underspending on hosting is always going to hurt you. Yeah, so certainly if you're a proper business and you're selling things, you should be able to afford $50 rather than $10 at the very least. Otherwise, you're being shortchanged on speed or security or access to um, configure like people who understand hosting well enough to configure your site to perform at its best. So many hosting setups um, are run by companies and people who just throw it out there. There's no configuration or tweaking. So yeah, we do have a yes, uh, yes. yes. We, we do have yoast.com slash WordPress dash hosting with uh, a lot of uh, good hosts that we've, you know, we have good relationships with. Um, we don't get paid if you click on those links. It's not, they're not affiliate, li affiliate links on purpose because I want to be able to take them away if they do shitty things. So um, look at those and, and well, you can pick from there. This is looking really good, though, John. I, I mean, from yeah, this is perspective, nice. there's there's a lot to say about this, but this is a this is true. This is this has some <laughs> some um, some 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 self in it that I don't that you don't often see. But at the same time, I'm le I'm lacking people. Yeah, this is interesting. So this came up. So this is the um, this is the diary, uh, which is um, the, the blog, the same thing. Um, yeah, so the whole premise of this brand is the people behind it are these expert curators of vintage fabrics. And that's a wonderful story. And there is evidence of, of how real and important that is as you go through. But who are these people? So this is a blog post. You would expect this to have some kind of indication of the author. You talked earlier about how important authorship is, stroke was, stroke is. Um, and like even from a human perspective, if you're trying to convince me of the authenticity of your brand, who, who are you? Who, who, who is this person? So yeah, I definitely expect some kind of indication as I scroll down. I see this on tons of WordPress sites. I'm trying to see if I can dig it out here. It's been removed from the template, but so often um, people who run a site will have a username of site admin or something, and they'll publish all of their blog posts as site admin. That's not a human with a name and a face and a biography and evidence of their experience. So yeah, like for this site, it's not quite, it's verges, verges on strategic rather than technical and content. But yeah, putting a face to some of this would really make it feel more legitimate and authoritative. And Google may or may not understand that explicitly, but it's certainly going to help users. Yeah, if I'm buying from a small brand as a user, I'm, and this looks like a small brand, right? And in many ways it wants to be, then I'd go to the about page and look at who, okay, who are you? Do I trust you? Because you, yep. you won't have any of the other signals that show that you're real because you're a small one. So there was an interesting um, uh, challenge here with some of the template logic to get technical for a second. This is the diary page, which lists the recent blog posts. If I, Nip back to here. You can see in a blog post, we've got slash blog. If I remove that, I get a whole different template, which is essentially duplicating all the individual posts. And you can see things like these are the individual material pages. So probably not many users have seen this, but this is a really weird kind of orphaned template that I can paginate through and go and see what pages that I probably shouldn't be able to discover as a user. Now, that's possibly to do with using Visual Composer. It might be an attribute of how the theme's been built, but I definitely want to go and look at um, every possible URL and every possible page on this site for each one say, should this exist? Should it be public? If it shouldn't be public, can I delete it? Can I redirect it? Can I change how my theme works to hide it? This one's probably a bit technical. You might need to look at using the pre-get posts filter in WordPress, which is a real deep dive, but you could change how your site works um, to prevent these pages from even existing or being returned. So definitely worth doing some tidying here. Related, I wonder, Joost, your thoughts on, um, at the moment, these material pages, which I think have a huge amount of potential, just look like posts. I think there's, these should be custom post types, right? Yeah, th th this is where, it you could use so much more. I, I, and there's two things I, I think about when I see this page. I mean, it's a bit thin on content. 
even though it's really it could be really the the fabric that ties your side together in many ways. <laughs> um, so, so. <laughs> um, I, 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 I truly think that this would be a great entry point for, for people to, to go in. And now I'm on a fabric page and on the right hand side, you're, you're showing me products that are not related to the fabric that I'm looking at. I can't go yeah. from here to those products. That is a missed opportunity. I want to yeah. be able to, to browse like that and then you, you'll get the interlinking that you want. Absolutely. The sidebar here look looks- at the detail, it's so nice. Sorry. Um, it, it, well, these details are, they're incredible. I, in many ways, I, I find it in one of those American stores. I want to see pictures of that store. I, tell me I, the story. I, tell me the whole story. This is, and I know we're in the technical side review, but a lot of good selling online is telling the story, making the entire story, making people feel it. Yep. No, absolutely. And yeah, as you so this this sidebar only appears because I've recently viewed these. If you haven't been and browsed around, this is empty. And I think there's, there's a common mistake that people make that they assume that people land on a product page or their home page and then explore down and outwards. Actually, yeah, this could and should be a landing page. If I want a bag made in this particular material or something like it, I should be able to discover this page and then go up or across or be guided through the site to things that are relevant. It does a bit of that with the tags, but this this doesn't feel very curated. No. And obviously that helps with internal linking and so on and so forth. Yeah, and also one of the things I noticed as I was going through the site, um, Yoast SEO by default has titles and title templates. So this one has clutch archives. Uh, yeah. The word archives in title templates is something that I struggle with myself. It's in our defaults, but in this case, you should change it. These are not clutch archives. These are clutch bags. The, the, you should change that default title and make it fit to what you're doing on your site. And this, this goes for everything because tote bag archives, uh, that's not what it is. These are tote bags. Yeah. So and also, oh, sorry. No, yeah. I, I, and, and then on top of that, you, what you're probably also going to say, you, you need content. <laughs> yeah. this, I mean, this is a category page. If you want to rank for the word tote bag, or if what I would do if I were you, you're making these artisanal. You have all these um, these add-ons to uh, the keywords that that make you specifically you. Use those in how you're in you're making those pages. So they're not just tote bags. They're artisanal handmade tote bags from Spain. And then if somebody is searching for handmade tote bags or something like that, the chance of you showing up is a lot bigger. And then you need some content there as well to actually show that. I think that's a really interesting point because there's there's a scale there, right? So at the moment, it feels like they are unoptimized and not, not quite using the right terminology. The other end of the scale, if you're talking about how artisanal and bespoke they are, you might have missed the mark again. So there's a really good example here where the home page's page title is affordable luxury bags with limited editions made in Spain. I suspect that the search volume and market for affordable luxury bags isn't as big as um, bespoke bags, for example. Now you'd want to do the research to check this and think about the the localization and the countries and all of those details, but getting that right in the sweet spot is, is definitely important. Should we move on to the next or do we still have some time for this one? I don't know how far we in, uh, how far we are in we are actually. Yeah, what do we reckon? We've had, oh yeah, we've had a while on that. Let's do another one. Um, I'll just skim through and see if there's anything else. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, if you're the owner of this site, the manager, get in touch with us. We do have a whole they, bunch they, of other bullet they, points. They, they, the webmaster just responded that she would love the video of this uh, this thing. Well, well, we'll make sure to get you that if we can. I think we can. Um, and we have a lot of notes, so we'll send you those too. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty really cool. <laughs> okay. Let's look at a very different website. This is... Oh, it occurs to me that I've only read that and don't know how to pronounce it out loud. Why don't you introduce I, it? I, I think it's Malstadt Ranch. I, I loved this. I mean, the yep. diversity in the types of sites that were submitted was ridiculous. These people sell horses and sheep. And um, not just one or two, but quite a few of them. 
Yeah, I thought I noticed that when I started looking at it, I thought, okay, this is one of those sites that's a kind of a hobby thing with a couple of pay. We have a few horses. When you look at the sold horses section, which we'll come on to, there's 15 pages of archive there with 20 horses on each. This is a big deal. These, these people are pretty serious about it. Um, so they got in touch and they had some questions specifically about schema. So I thought we might start there. Um, so you just mentioned it earlier. Um, since just 11.0 um, last April, um, we overhauled all our schema stuff. And for every site running Yoast, we output a ton of structured data and schema stuff in the background, mostly without you having to worry about it. We'll get on some of that in my talk later. Um, you can see that if I gave you the source code. Um, here we are, something like this. Now, what I thought was interesting in this one, and the question was essentially, how do we enable this and get more out of it? There's some stuff missing from this schema graph, and you might not spot it, but um, one of the things that we output is a description of the organization or the person who runs the site. Now that piece of information is critical because we need to understand whether this is a company or a hobby block. And then a whole bunch of the other schema settings change or schema output change based on that. What it looks like is that setting hasn't been configured. So you need to go into your WordPress admin, into the search appearance settings, and there's a little section that says, um, are you an organization or a person? What's the name of your organization and what's your logo? All you have to do is fill in that, and I'll talk about that later, and suddenly you get 10 times as much schema, it's much richer, it's much more descriptive. So the easy answer is turn it on, um, and then all the rest of that stuff will, um, will populate nicely. Yeah. Isn't that good? At the same time, I had a hard time classifying this properly in schema. Yeah. Because schema is a growing set of things to describe or, 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 or specifications to describe stuff. And to be honest, there's no ranch type yet in a schema. There should be. Yep. Because there's quite a few ranches in the world and most of this stuff comes from the US and well, that's where they have a lot of ranches too. Um, but it's it just doesn't exist yet, so um, it's probably a good thing to submit at some point and to and to fix. Uh, I I think we, it would actually be fun for us to to try and do that and see whether we can actually add those types because schema is open source. You can add types to it. We can, we can probably just try if that if that's doable, um, but you can't really specify this one. No, so we were looking at this because it's an interesting challenge. There's some nuance. So it feels like this is almost an e-commerce store, except for the fact that you can't add a horse to your checkout. But functionally, it looks like that. And then when you look at the closest matching themes in schema, you're essentially ending up with either pet store, which this isn't really, or animal shelter, which it also isn't really. So yeah, it definitely feels like there's a gap. Um, so you can, um, incidentally, you can configure those um, with the Yoast SEO local add-on. You can pick what type of local business you are, but you'll still need to check that you're an organization in that box. Um, but yeah, it might be might be slightly more accurate to say that you're an animal shelter rather than a generic um, small business, a local business. But yeah, it's a little bit gray at that point. Yeah. Um, incidentally, there's also no schema at all for animals. Um, and this comes up as a joke quite often in the schema community, but it's just because no one's done it yet. So there's, yeah, there's opportunity to do stuff there. Um, should we have a look at some other tech bits on here then? Um, so yeah. one of the things that immediately jumped out was the homepage title says homepage. Um, which I think is somewhat redundant. And there's some, there's some interesting stuff here. So um, the order of keywords in the title matters quite a lot. Um, and this is something we touch on in the content analysis we do in the plugin. Um, so on a product page, you or a service page, you really want to lead with the words that describe the page and the content first. The home page is slightly different. You probably just want the name of the company or, or, or site and maybe the tagline. You definitely don't need to say home page. It feels a little bit redundant. It, it, it's evidently the home page. So removing that might help to um, unconfuse users to streamline and sleek that up a little bit. Just felt like an easy win. And I, as clicking through this, this site, I just want to visit. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. It's the corona in me as well that has like, <laughs> oh, come on, I want to go out and I want to travel. <laughs> But yeah, no, it is it is really nice. It 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 looks really cool. Um, the thing is that this site has a lot of cool stuff, and then sometimes it looks as though it hasn't been maintained all that well. 
which yeah, I there's definitely it's... some aesthetic challenges with the theme. I mean, that's a matter of opinion, but I think this does look a bit dated. Things like the tiling background, the heavy masthead, the thin content port. These are all trends that have come and gone with good reason. Yeah, because and, and, device... there's, there's an even bigger ind indicator. Um, oh, oh, yes, if I can, can find you scroll an down. Where uh, are we? Uh, on let's go on. Uh, yeah. just scroll down to the bottom. Yes, there go. is the yeah. Google Plus share button. Yeah. That is a very good indicator that Google Plus, which is down for like two years now, take that button away. It's not yeah. needed. Um, nobody's going to use it. Just take it away. Yeah, in some cases, these pages haven't been updated since 2014, 2015. I think in some cases, maybe that's fine. Maybe they don't need to be. But definitely keeping things fresher would help, especially um, things like the quality and size of the images, maybe getting rid of some cruft. Um, other interesting stuff, thinking of titles and descriptions. And there's no meta descriptions anywhere. Um, and I won't go into masses of depth because it, it, it's pretty basic stuff, but not, so we generally, we, ah, I lied, there is one on this page. On the many, many other pages I reviewed, there was no meta description, <laughs> including the homepage. Damn you, you got there um, before the review, didn't you? Um, yeah, making sure they're there and they're optimized is a really good plan. Um, uh you can, can you go to one of the other pages that I, uh, I, if you go to livestock and more and then to sheep. <laughs> Great. Uh, because yes, they don't just have horses. They also have sheep, which is awesome. And they, they sell this. So I have to contact them by February, 2020, if I'm interested in, uh, in, in lamb. Uh, yeah. And, and honestly, when I go to this and I want lamb now, I, I, the lamps, what's the, this is yeah, that lamps to, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, update that and tell me what to do now if I want it now, because I might be here, I might be wanting to buy and then as a user, I go, oh shit. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. One of the, um, what was I going to say? Uh, one of the other things that popped out thinking of that was that as you, um, as you go into some of these, uh, A, the images are really inconsistently sized and of an inconsistent quality, but also um, these pages are loading a ton of JavaScript in order to load this light box. Um, this is old school. There are more modern sneaker ways. So each page takes a second, maybe two seconds longer to load than it needs to in order to load the technology to do this. There are definitely better ways to do this. There are off-the-shelf solutions. Gosh, maybe even look at AMP for this site. Um, to do this really, really sleekly. Um, yeah, there's like things like this gap here. It's just mm, this image hasn't loaded properly. There's definitely problems here where it needs a bit of a lick of paint. Um, at the moment, it's not compelling. It's not convincing if bits of it are broken or missing. And, it, and it, in many ways, I think it, this could actually uh, benefit well from using the block editor and making it, uh, and using that a bit more to, to make this page. It, it doesn't yes. look like it does. It might actually do that in the back end. I don't know, of course, we haven't logged in. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it, there is some work here. So one of the other things I wanted to pick up on, which is a really common issue, I think on all the sites we've looked at today is taxonomy management. So WordPress out the box gives you categories and tax and no guidance on how to use them. Um, what happens when you start putting everything in lots of tags or when you have dozens of categories within categories is you create lots of additional pages and maybe you also create paginated versions of those pages. So this, this example page, I think, yeah, here we go, is, um, oh no, not even the best example. Where was the other one? Have I lost track of it? Maybe somewhere in my notes. This is two levels deep. This is broodmares for sale, within horses for sale, also within sections. Actually, the stuff on this page is pretty much a direct duplicate of the stuff that's on this page. Now, in this case, it's not too bad because there's lots of others, but you get the idea as you start to put things in lots of these subcategories. I wish I could find an example in my notes. Have I lost that one? I definitely had one. Mm -hmm. um, no, find it, yeah, so here's another example. This is a um, this is a tag archive. And the only thing in this tag archive is this one particular horse. And there are many examples of this. This page isn't great value. It's not going to convince or attract anybody. It's almost a direct duplicate of um, the other tags that this horse is in. These need tidying. Now, in the Yoast SEO search appearance settings, you can say, don't include my tag archives or my category archives or my custom post archives in the search results. 
whether or not you want to do that is going to be different for everyone and everyone's site and their content settings. So you need to look at it and think, are these types of pages providing value for the user? Well, what you're sometimes? really saying, John, and I think, and I think that, and, uh, that's maybe something that people don't realize is you don't have to use both of them. Yes. You yeah, absolutely. Just, you can just stick to get categories and you'll be fine. On Yoast.com, we stuck, we, we've stuck to tags and we don't use categories anymore. Yeah, so, we might have a product that's good for speed and a blog post that's good for speed and something else that's good for speed. And it doesn't make sense to try and categorize them, but rather we want to thread them all together with a tag. So yeah, it's a it, it bears thinking about. And um, this question came in, but it, it, it fits to exactly the page that you have open now as well. If you have archives, for anything, make sure that those archives themselves are worthwhile. So this yeah. archive should have a description of why this, uh, what the posts in this archive are for. And if you can't write an, a description for what the posts in that archive are for, the archive probably should not exist. Yeah. So uh, they're using far too many tags on this site because they have probably more tags than they have posts. Um, and that is a very good indicator of having too many tags. There's also, so, so, yeah. I, I see a few okay. tags there with, with um, I see successful with one C, um, which is a typo. So get rid of those. You don't need them, redirect them somewhere. If you have our premium plugin, if you delete a tag, it'll pop you up to say, hey, can I, should I redirect it somewhere else? Redirect it to uh, a related uh, tag that, it, that is a better fit. And then just get rid of a lot of those. And don't feel the need to use both categories and tags. You're okay if you use only one of them. Yeah, I, I can't stress enough that um, this is a really good blog post. It's really interesting. It's full of data. It's full of research. But it's also created 30 other low-value pages. So if every one good post you're creating is adding 30 bad ones to your site, that's, you're going to have problems with performance and discovery and all sorts. So yeah, again, the same principles before. Look at every one of these pages and types of templates and say, is this adding value? Is it useful? And if it's not, then you probably shouldn't be exposing it to Google. Yeah, and I okay. see another thing here in the in the screen that you you have open here. Please subscribe to our monthly newsletter. I I, I might want to do that if I like you, but why would I do that? Give I'll me a reason to subscribe. What is the yep. value yep. proposition for your newsletter? What yep. will you tell me every month? What will you give me? Uh, and and tell me that. Then I might hit subscribe a lot faster. Can I uh, ask a quick in-between question? Yes, of course. Uh, about the tags and categories, you said you, you, you don't necessarily need both of them, uh, but is there a sort of a fundamental difference between those? Like where, why, why did Yoast, for instance, uh, Yoast.com go for tags uh, or, or are they simply interchangeable? Uh, well, well, they are and they're not. So categories are structured. Uh, so a category can have child categories. Tags do not have that luxury by default in WordPress. Yoast.com is a strange beast. Um, it's grown over 14 years. Uh, the company's 10 years old, the site's a bit older. Um, we stuck with tags because our tags were better classified than our categories at some point. We had, we used to have both as well. We made the same mistake. We got rid of categories. We actually made our tags into structured. So our tags can have parent child relationships. Um, but um, yeah, for us, tags were just the thing that we'd used better. And then still we had to lose a lot of them because um, we, what, you, what you just end up with is a mess. And honestly, almost every site I've ever worked on has a mess in its tags, with one exception. And that was The Guardian, where it was someone's job, literally someone's job, to apply tags to the content that they created. I would love that job. <laughs> Simply because he made sure that the amount of tags they were using was not insane. And that is, uh, tagging is really important. This is information management as it, at, its, at its finest. Yeah, and I think um, 
the easiest way to think about it is from a user perspective. Categories are where things live. Which bucket should this thing go in? Tags are ways to connect related things outside of that. So you might have categories for different types of food. I might have tags for everything that's red. Uh, and now, now as a user, I can find other related things and navigate between categories via tags. Um, one more thing on this one, I guess, before we move on. This um, really jumped out to me. So they have this section for sold horses, which I said earlier is huge. This is like the biggest content section of the site. There are two really interesting questions there, I think. One is, should these pages be indexable by Google? Is it a bad user experience if I search for and land on a page where it says this is sold? Now, that's probably more than we can answer in this context, but it's worth thinking about. Um, and you might want to change the template and the content to make that clearer. But it also occurred to me that I suspect these horses are being moved from these other categories. And if, if there's a whole 2020 section and next year they're all moved into sold horses, are redirects being set up for that? Do the old URLs return a 404 error? How is that managed? Uh, now, this is something that, depending on how you do it, the Yoast SEO Premium plugin will help you create um, redirects for. But anytime you're moving or recategorizing stuff, just think about what happens to that old URL. Ideally, you shouldn't be moving stuff at all, but sometimes, in this case, it kind of makes sense. But that, this is something that got me thinking that, again, maybe this should be run more like an e-commerce site. Because an out-of-stock behavior feels closer to what we're trying to represent here than moving a page into a different category. Well, yes and no. At the same time, you want to sort of, if that, if one of these horses becomes a prize foul, yep. then it's really good that you've had a, had a page for that on your site. So I, what I would do is keep it. I, I would, but I would make sure that you don't move them. So I would change the structure of your site so that uh, horses for sale is not in the URL of the horse that you're selling, but just just the name of the horse it doesn't need to be in there and yes, then it just it should be very clear that it's sold because people will link to this people might even talk about this on twitter or on facebook where they say hey i've bought this horse and and then other people might be interested so what you then need is hey this this horse is sold which other horses are like this one this is where where you where it, the out of stock thing that you're saying comes becomes really important because if you actually want to sell to people that reach that reach those pages, you need to sell to them. And nothing on this page sells. Yeah. Yeah, and again, we talked about lateral navigation earlier, but where is where is that shepherding? What's the next step for the user? And if it is sign up for the newsletter, it's not compelling at the moment. Now, one last thing I wanted to pick up on this one before we move on. I think this is really interesting. So all of the horse pages have this kind of structure. And this is manually entered text in what looks like a table which makes the SEO in me really uncomfortable. That's not tabulated data. It's going to confuse Google. It's a bit weird. It's formatted awkwardly. I did really like that it links to the stallion in the line, though. This is really interesting. So we've got clever internal linking here across the lineage. Now, if I had a bit of development budget and wanted to update this theme, I would be looking at using um, the advanced custom fields plugin and connecting these pages so that um, this kind of structure is automatically output based on the relationship between the horses. And then you've got the most incredible internal linking, all of the relevance, and a lot of, solves some of that problem of lateral navigation as well. That would be awesome. Bit of work to do, but pretty cool. This is, honestly, this is, um, there must be something in schema for this because this would end up on any gene genealogy side as well for, mm -hmm. for humans. You'd want lineage like this, and you'd, you want, you'd want to be able to do that. It's a very interesting problem. Definitely. Okay, should we do um, site three? Site three should be very quick and easy. Yes. And then we can do some questions. Okay, so site three is, one, two, three, ta-da. There we go. This is um, the Arenda blog, which is um, written by and about a woman who a few years ago was um, diagnosed with all sorts of particularly unpleasant flavors of cancer. Um, isn't the nicest topic, sorry. Um, but this um, this looks and feels and is in all regards very representative of that kind of self-made um, storytelling blogger site. Um, it's monetized a little bit by affiliate products and some webinar stuff, but this is um, the kind of site which so many of our users and WordPress users and people doing SEO have and work with. So it felt like a really good example to try and probe a bit. There is one big challenge with it, one big challenge, which is that it is not running your favorite WordPress SEO plugin. 
There is no evidence when I go and dig in the source code no, or anywhere else not. around the system. There, 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 there is no, it has no sitemap either. Oh, and that's sad. So, th so these guys got in touch and said, could you give us a technical audit? So the first thing I'm going to say is get the product, get the free product, upgrade to the premium one, maybe if you need the features, but, but sit, oh, if you've got it, turn it on. Um, that would be a good start. Um, there are so many things. So I started digging at this. So I was like, that's odd. Is there a bug in the product? What's going on? What have we missed? Um, and there are so many things that I just found that every one of those was a bit sad because this is a good site. It's authentically good. It's helping people. They're doing research. They're talking about mental health and well-being and exercise and coping and helping a whole bunch of people. But there are problems with it. Things like, as Yo says, there's no XML sitemap, so discovery is difficult. There's no schema. There's um, issues with the tag archive. Stuff is in the index that it shouldn't be. It's just um, a bit sad. Things like um, if I go to date archives, again, the same problems as the previous sites where you've got to consider, is every single page useful? This site has archives for every single date that a post has been published on. That's hundreds and hundreds of these pages that just list stuff in that week, day or month. Now, WordPress does, does this by default, but we, in many cases, um, turn that off through Yoast SEO. So these are either um, not indexed or not discoverable, and that feels like a better user experience. But yeah, stuff like this, this site is weaker just because it's not running the stuff. So that was pretty sad. In yeah, and one of the things that, that I want to highlight as well, the, can you go up, uh, John, the, is it the oh, author? Yeah, the author oh, yeah, yeah, the, here we go. Yeah, so the author has a name. Um, yeah. I, I mean, she has an about page that's fully about her. Um, I would really, really suggest redirecting this page and all the pages underneath it to the about me page. Because if I click on that author name, I would really want to read about you and then go into the settings of your WordPress site, go to your own WordPress profile and fill out your full name so that I can see your full name with these blog posts, because I want to read this. This is an interesting story and you're not leading half of the people here that want to go there. Yep. I'm going to strain to content for a minute because um, I think this is interesting as well. If I look at some of the words on this page um, and let's see if this one is the same. Yeah, you can see this bold line here is a paragraph with a strong tag on it. That should be an H2 or an H3, and it should be structures. There's a nice way. I'm sure the content team are talking about this a lot at the moment in the other webinar, but um, it's not technically hugely important to do this for Google. It doesn't matter whether it's a paragraph or an H2 or a cat. It does matter for users. It matters for accessibility. It matters for standardized styling and line spacing and things. It's just one of those quality things. Now, if you're using Gutenberg, this should be easier to do um, correctly than it is to do badly in Gutenberg. And if you're not using Gutenberg, I would definitely maybe nudge you towards using it. I know it's a big change in people's workflows. It's a big change in WordPress's interface. It is the future of content editing. And if you want to compete, you have to be competitive, which means using the best tools. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry about that. I think we've got a few minutes for some questions, don't we, Omar? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess we have time for about three questions or something like that. Uh, we should be wrapping up in two or three minutes. Um, one question that came in is about uh, the difference between category pages and uh, product pages in a, uh, uh, that belong to that category. Uh, how would you approach optimizing the text for those different pages? Because that, what, what, what what should people take into account? Or do you have a good resource for that? Do we have a resource for that on Yoast.com, for example? I think we do have an article on that, but it's, it's, it, it is really hard. Let me be honest about that. Category page SEO is one of the most important things in e-commerce. It's also one of the hardest things to do right, because what do you write there? What do you write on a category page for bathing suits or for uh, shirts or whatever? The point is that your individual products have names, numbers, and everything that you that people might search for and that they might want to find the individual product for. But you usually need to optimize the um, category page for the type of product that you're selling. So you, what you need to do at that point is uh, optimize for terms that people search for. So in this case, a, a, a model might be called Debbie, but nobody's searching for Debbie. So, so you need to you need to optimize for stuff that people search for, and 
and at the same time you need you need to add value so that category page needs to rather than just be a, li a list of products it also needs to tell you why is this product needed and for what and how would i pick the best one for me two two things to add to that quickly um one is do not just put a load of text at the bottom of the page if you're having to force content into your category page at the bottom for seo it's probably harming your users it's probably harming your seo there's a whole bunch of research that says this makes things worse definitely doesn't feel like a good authentic tactic if like in the back to the back side if this content is interesting and useful which it, it's not bad then it should be at the top it should be solving problems the other thought is that the difference in behavior is worth considering. If I'm on a product page, I want to understand the attributes of that product. If I'm on a category page, I'm comparing. I want to see the cheapest one or only the red ones or the best one or what my options are and the types of wording you might use to describe that and solve those, answer those user questions is gonna be different. Right, I see, I see more questions coming in, but we really need to wrap up. Um, I, I, I was just saying, I can answer that last question, that question that came in there from Amy in, in, in one, one sentence. Amy is asking, is it better to have two sites or use something like WPML? Use multilingual press, nothing else. Yeah. End of story. <laughs> we need to, we yeah. need to wrap up, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, if I was really yeah, organized, we, I would flick it back to my slide that says what's coming up next, wouldn't I? But I've got too many windows open. Well, you know what's coming up next, Jono. Uh, we've Do got I? A, yeah, we've got a 10-minute break, and then uh, you're going to present uh, a talk hey, on I know the that screen. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know that guy. He's just been talking to me for 45 minutes. They worked me really hard at Yoast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, we, we're going to have a, a short break now and uh, we'll be back in eight minutes uh, for Jono's uh, talk about schema. Awesome. Catching a bit. People. Bye everyone. Thanks for attending. Bye, bye. Yeah, thank you.